Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's so great to have all of you tuning us in and turning us on. So for you all today, what a special treat we have lined up for you all. This is the Dr. Pat Show, Talk Radio to Thrive By. I am Dr. Pat. And just a heads up for, uh, who is it, Bill, that emailed me? Uh, Yes, I also do a show called Power Up with Dr. Pat. Uh, It's not heard here, although we're thinking about bringing it here one day a week. Um, And yes, I will be bringing Power Up with Dr. Pat back. So going through a little bit of an adjustment with the new interface for our technology. But yeah, that is going to be uh, something we do bring back. Actually, we've got a number of things we're doing. Today, though, it's all about one of the most important discoveries in my life. Having lost pretty much everybody that's been close to me, I wondered what that was about. But let me give a shout out to Mr. Benny. Hi, B. How are hey, you today? How Doing you been? Very awesome. Awesome as usual. Happy Thursday. Thank you. I got my little turquoise thing on or what it this color. I like it. Ooh, it looks fabulous on you. I'm trying to lighten up. Well, it's the season, so you might as well. It, Why it be all black and gloomy? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Bring it that pop of color in. That's springtime. Pop of color. Bring it in. I, oh, no. You got a pop of color. I got to tell you, though, you see the hair, though? Right here? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So what happened was all of us are like in place. Yep. Yep. In place. And so I got to admit this. I took a buzz razor to my head because I don't have a way to get my hair cut. So I started to use this and I think I did a pretty good job. But you see, in some cases, like I literally got rid of all my blonde hair. Mm-hmm. So my hairstylist is like, please, please, if you're going to do that again, you, you really should channel somebody from the afterlife to come in and guide your hand in doing this. And I'm going to talk to my very special guest about this today uh, and, and just talk about how we literally do those things. Today, back again because she and I have done this before, but I don't think we've ever done it on video. And we've got Olivia at the helm here on Facebook. So if you go to Facebook Transformation Talk Radio, you're going to see the video pop up because we're doing this live video as well. Um, Everything you wanted to know about the afterlife, right? Everything you wanted to know, here it is right here. Got this? Everything you wanted to know about the afterlife, but were afraid to ask. So many questions, so little time. Uh, For those of you that don't or may not know who Hollister is, um, I know you know of her. I know you've seen her on TV, but you've probably seen her on Coast to Coast. You've probably seen her doing seances like with John John Edward. You probably have seen her, heard of her, have read her books, right? Whatever that is, she is someone that somehow got tapped on a shoulder. And when you get tapped on a shoulder to show up as she is showing up in this lifetime, you have to wonder, you have to wonder what is life, a day in the life with Hollister Rand about. And I got to tell you, this book pretty much talks about that. Hollister, it's great to have you. Welcome. Oh, well, thank you so much. And thank you for that very generous introduction. And I do want you to know that hairdressers in spirit are helping us all. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, I have to um, I have to do a uh, video supplement for a video music video that I was in in October. So I have to do a supplement where I'm going to be uh, lip syncing the song that is going to be released. Right. All about love. And, uh, and so, you know, not wanting to violate any of the shelter in place, I am left up to my own mischievous ways of doing my hair. So any help you can give me in this arena with the after like I'm welcoming. 
Well, what's important to note, I mean, we're sort of making light of this, but what right. is important to understand is that all of us on this earth plane have supporters in spirit. So those on the front lines have healthcare workers in spirit helping them. Researchers have researchers in spirit. So none of us is managing this pandemic on our own. No, no. I am so clear about that. And and let me, let's just get right into it for a minute. Um, there have been things that have shown up for us as a network that we wouldn't otherwise have thought about doing or have thought about launching or have thought about implementing. And I have said more time than not, and this is really the question, I've said more time than not, it's not me. That idea came to me. And I don't say that lightly because almost every idea of possibility that has come into my being has come from somewhere, but not a logical and linear place. Because I don't have the kind of skills, right, in this logical linear earth to design something called AI for the soul, right? That idea came out of nowhere. And I want to talk with you about that because everything you wanted to know about the afterlife, this is a fantastic book. But it starts out with the very premise of, is there really an afterlife? So let's start there. Well, I was very surprised when that question was asked because it was asked during a metaphysical cruise. Uh, we were having workshops on board a ship and, um, and everybody there uh, was taking workshops that had to do with spirit communication, intuition, you know, all sorts of things like that. So I kind of thought that question was settled for the people on that cruise. So imagine my surprise when I picked that question out of a basket. Because what I do at my events is I have people write down their questions, put their questions in a basket so that those heartfelt questions that they might not want to ask in front of other people do get asked. So I pulled out that question, looked at it and thought, what? Now I could have been flippant and just said, of course there's an afterlife. What, you know, if there weren't, I'd be out of a job. But I paused because in pausing, you listen, you listen for the wisdom of the spirits. And as I stood there in quietude in front of all of these people, maybe they were a little uncomfortable, but that's okay. I don't care how uncomfortable a situation gets if I need to listen. So there I was listening, looking at loved ones showing up around the people in the audience. And I heard like a collective statement from them all. There is no afterlife. There is only life. And I have to tell you, that yeah. was a huge shift for me, even as a medium, because I kind of thought, all right, as a medium, I stand between life and death. I'm the communicator between these things. And all of a sudden I realized I'm not a communicator. I might be a facilitator and maybe a translator, um, but I'm not standing between anything because we are all alive, whether on earth or in spirit. And that's why I, I really had to get you to talk about this because we could have blown by that and this discovery, right? Every time I do an interview, I always ask how has, and I'm gonna ask you this same question because I've read your books. I mean, I, I, I am all over what you're doing, right? Because I'm not kidding. I lost every woman that was ever close to me, that ever mentored me, right? And, and I went back. My mom commits suicide. Mm -hmm. And I could go through this with you. Mm -hmm. But I can point to these. Very, couple of us, a couple of my sisters my birth sister, suddenly, not, wow, they were sick. Like one day, my mentor, my spiritual mentor, Sedonia Cahill, on a trip I was supposed to be on with her, had a car accident and a stake went through her heart. So I had a point in time right about 1998, 99, where I thought, oh my God, am I not supposed to have women friends? And and then I, I did this in 2003 and I started to explore this and I've talked to you and I've read your books. So the fact 
that you have written this book the way you've written this book lends me to ask you, how have you changed as a result of writing this book? Because there is some new things in here that people need to know about. Well, I, what, the way I would answer that is these are cumulative changes <laughs> in my life that are sort of solidified in the book. I've been doing this work for 25 plus years and been involved with spirit communication longer than that. I, I know I look as fresh as a daisy, but I have been on this earth for quite, I know, a, me too. Yeah, <laughs> quite a period of time. Um, and during that time, I've been listening to the thematic refrains from the spirits. You know, what are the things that really matter to them and how, as we change as a group, do they then expand our consciousness? So I think that's why I felt prompted to, to write this book. I am so glad you wrote it. And I'm so glad it's out now. You know, I don't know it, how much of the pop culture and what you're following with COVID-19, but here's what I've noticed about things. And I would love to ask you about it because it, I think it grabs a bunch of questions in your book. I'm watching people say something like this and myself, I'm one of them. I'm watching them say, I don't know what caused me to to pull out a game I used to do with my parents, like not a digital game, but I don't know what called me to start to pull these things that my mom did with me. Things like puzzle, right? So I'm hearing this over and over and over again. We're trying to get help. We're just having a hard time receiving it. Tell me what's going on. Well, there are a few reasons for that. I'd like to just talk about when I was reading this book, because I also did the audio version. Yeah. When I was reading this book, and I'm going to let you in on a secret, in my closet, I was reading this book with my microphone and software on my laptop because all the recording studios are closed. Right. So we were on deadline and I thought, well, okay, where is the quietest room in my house? So there I was in my closet reading the book and I got to the question about guides and angels. And there's a line in there which says, I am seeing angels with stunning frequency. This could be due to the threat of life on our planet. Now I got to that line and I broke down crying. I had written that, I don't know, 18 months, two years ago, something along those lines. And I've been seeing angels show up. So I realized in that moment, oh my goodness, the spirits are already here. They have been here. We just haven't noticed. Um, and so with the, all the thought of life and death, with our asking for answers, nowhere in my lifetime can I remember the entire world thinking about life and death and experiencing grief in some form at the same time. I mean, right. that is a huge ask. And so the rest of that paragraph about the angels goes on to talk about how they are here for transformation, for walking us toward our greatest and best selves. And that's ultimately the plan of the spirits, but it happens in network. So as soon as we pull out an old recipe, I did this, I found my grandmother's um, depression recipe. It was like for a five spice cake or something, you know, and I was doing this before any of this happened. I found the recipe box and I said to my sister, shall I send it to you? People are pulling out games. We are in the networks with our spirits and all of our ancestors have lived through one difficult time or another, whether it was the depression, World War II, genocide of some sort, um, other pandemics. Our ancestors have lived through these things and they are here to help us now. I, it's so funny that you said that. I pulled out, I can't remember which grandma, I think it was Grandma Balela. All of a sudden, I'm making Italian wedding soup with my grandma's little meatball recipe out of nowhere it's like i'm gonna make that soup now my sense is i gotta take here you know what the perfect i never do the show with this mic like this i never do it this is a real thing before the show i heard a voice say you've 
you've got to show the gold mic. You've got to show the, usually watch, it's that. And Benny will tell you because of the way I speak, it's more effective, but I couldn't do it. And I've got to ask you about this. You know, something told me to do that. Someone told me to do it. And then here's what I remember. Grandma Bolella had a gold tooth. I love it. A gold like gold. Now, yes. that may not make, may not make sense to people, right? But in your book, these relationships, are we being asked to bring those relationships back to the forefront? Because I got to tell you, I, I haven't thought about Grandma Bolella in a really long time. And this is the woman that taught me so many things, but she taught me to smile. How can we, right? You cover it in the book. How do we do a better job about hearing this? Well, I teach people how to practice deep listening. I teach people, and there are exercises in the book. Um, and it was funny, my publisher read the book, you know, when I submitted it. And she called me up, she said, you know, these exercises really work. Well, imagine that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put them in the, in the book if they weren't tried and true. But one of the things I suggest to people is that they look at the synchronicities in, our, in their lives because a high level of synchronicity, things happening that kind of make you go, what? Um, those things happening in quick succession um, can let you know that you are connected with a specific person. So let's just think of your grandmother. It wasn't just one thing. You were making her wedding soup. You felt inspired to do that. And then there's the, the microphone, the gold. Now, what I would say is one of those things by itself, you might be able to ignore. Right. But what begins to happen is synchronicities build and build and build and point to a specific person in our lives. And that is, that is how we begin to have confidence that those we love are with us. Wow. You know, uh, I want to tell everybody, uh, we have the phone lines open for today, 1-800-930-2819. Because one of the reasons that Linda was so adamant about doing the show and doing it now was, and, and I, I can't speak for Linda, and I certainly won't. Linda's been my best friend for a gazillion years. And uh, like, literally, her mom and dad became my mom and dad. And, they, and I am here today because of Linda and her family. I'm telling you, otherwise I would be dead in jail somewhere, but I'm not. Um, and she became my producer after my producer left. And I'm telling you, uh, she's brilliant at this. But one of the things she and I talk about that I don't talk about to other people are the things you have in this book. And I have this question for you that she and I were debating. We use the terms, and I'm just going to throw it out there so you can correct me. Ghost, spirit, psychic, medium, angel reader, pet communicator. We just like lump everybody together. And I had to stop doing it because I'm getting ready to do a show with Mark Anthony and we're going to call the show something like the psychic and the doc. But there's such a misconception about it all. And so rather than keep arguing with my best friend, you got to help us out because all of those questions are in the book. Yes, all of the questions are in the book. And the answers run several pages right. uh, with lots of examples. So, you know, the idea that I can sum it up, you know, really pithily in one sentence uh, probably won't happen. But I look at ghosts and spirits as different. I look at ghosts as spirits with a bad attitude. And so when I do my work, I work specifically at the frequency of love. And what that means is I meet at these high level frequencies. Only, only spirits that have our best interests at heart are able to communicate with me. So I let I let that be the difference between ghosts and spirits. Ghosts are often spirits who are, uh, and I think I have a chart in the book, ghosts are this, spirits are that, you know? Um, and one of the things is that ghosts get attached to physical places here on the earth plane. Um, spirits are attached and helping people on the earth plane. So what I would say is ghosts are associated with an address. 
and uh, spirits are associated with people whose body are their address, whose body is the address. So there are differentiations that I set out in the book. I yeah, also... With, with your that? permission, after we, uh, we take the videos, we edit them, we send them to you. With your permission, we'd love to add that chart in here. Okay, uh, I'm fine with that. Um, you would just have to ask, you know, Simon & Schuster or Beyond Words or whoever. But yeah, I'd, I'd be happy for people to have the info. It's, su it's such an important distinction, but let's get into this a little bit more. The distinction though, how does that distinction, because there's so much more to this and it's in the book in a lot of places. How does the distinction address how we are to be slash know slash communicate with those that have moved on? Well, I would say that since I've been doing the work at the frequency of love, there is an understanding that it, at that frequency, change and transformation are possible. See, when, with ghosts, it's like they're stuck in a loop and there's no moving forward. There's no change. You know, there's kind of this, I'm just going to tell the same old story. This is what happened to me. But with spirit, spirit is willing to let us let go, to help us let go from our lives, the things that are holding us back, to live in the world of possibility that they themselves live in. Um, and what I would say is the difference between working psychically and working as a medium. As a psychic, you see what the probability will be on the earth plane for someone, given what the energy, how the energy is running in their lives. So what is the most likely thing to happen given the situation that is present today? When I connect with spirits, they are always looking at what are the possibilities of life? What, is, what can we say, yes, this is going to happen. And then the bottom line is when we get that information, we can't sit there and figure out how to make it happen just allow it to happen and the spirits will bring people into our lives. And that has happened with both of my books. I, did, I haven't made anything happen in my life. It's really astonishing. I will get the sense of this, this is going to happen. With my first book, a, a woman got off an elevator at a workshop and she looked at me, she says, I've read every word of your book. Well, I had to laugh because I hadn't written it yet. I didn't even have a publisher yet. Uh, but I knew I was supposed to write a book. So I thought, okay, spirit, you are showing me that the book is there for me to write. I just, just lead me in the direction that I am to go. So that is something I would let people know here is you may not get the whole story. You may not know how everything is going to end. Um, but what we do know is that we are given steps every step of the way. And we have company along the way and guidance. I'm telling you, there's so much in here. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I want to talk with you about, hmm, what were some of the ahas for you? What were some of the questions that popped up in here that you were like, wow, that's new. That's different. And, and even some of the other ones, did you have a different answer for them this time? Uh, before we go to break, how do people get a copy of the book? How do they find out more about you? Well, I am located, my web address is hollisterrand.com. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. Um, the book is available um, on Amazon. It's sold out overnight, but they got more copies. So you can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Barnes & Noble. You can also support your local bookstore because uh, some bookstores will be having curbside delivery. But yeah, you can get it uh, Kindle. Um, you can download it with my voice apparently now. Um, so yeah, yeah, there are many I, ways to get the book. Yeah, I'm all over the audio version of the audible version of it because it, you show up like this, right? You're talking. Oh, there's an I'm energy. absolutely like this. Yeah, and I love that. Oh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to tap into what are some of the questions that really were like, really, that? And I'll tell you what some of the questions were for me. Then we're also going to explore one question that seems to be on a lot of people's minds right now because it's happening a lot right now. Suicide. Have them in my family. Suicide. Let's take a short break, everybody. When we come back, how can we be guided to 
greatest good beyond your imagination. We'll be right back. That is so awesome. Thank you, Benny. Wow, that brought me back a few years for a lot of reasons. <laughs> Hollis Durand is joining me here today. We are totally like excited about this, her new book. See that? Put it right up there if I can do that right. There you go. Uh, probably shows up backwards. So Olivia can help me with a picture of that. Um, Hollister, I love this book and the audio version of it as well, which is just, uh, I mean, there's just so much. How do people find out more about you? And of course, get a copy of the book because it will be back. In stock. Well, um, people can get in touch with me through HollisterRand.com. I have a free email newsletter every month, which will, you know, I write about spirit communication, tips for getting connected with your loved ones. So that comes out monthly. They can sign up on my website for that. I'm also on Facebook. The book is available right now on Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble, Walmart and Target. Um, dot com. And people can also probably order it from their bookstores for curbside pickup. Awesome. And by the way, I just want to make sure all of you know, everything you wanted to know about the afterlife, afterlife, but then what we're afraid to ask. That's why I love this show, because people are afraid to ask right? Before I get into a couple of other things, I'm just curious, as you were doing this and gathering these questions, were there any where you said, hmm, that question? Or have you done, been doing this so long that, you know, people were hitting you up for a different explanation of some of the same questions? Well, it's a little bit of both. Um, over the years, um, audiences who come to see me have more of a working knowledge of spirit communication, yeah. afterlife, reincarnation. So what I found where there were a lot of um, fears and concerns being expressed as questions. So um, I, I knew if someone came up to me and said, what happens uh, if when someone passes with suicide? Of course, they had lost someone to suicide. That yeah. was a given. No yeah. one has ever asked me that question who hasn't had someone they've lost in that way. Right. Another fear people had, was, what happened if I, if I die, but my loved one has reincarnated? Are we going to miss each other? You know, that's, I, I saw, I got like my finger right on that question. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a, so now that we have accepted, many of us have accepted reincarnation as part of life. What do you do with that? How, how do, how can spirit communication and reincarnation exist in the way that people are expressing it? You know, when you started doing this, we, it, right. And even when I started 16 years ago, doing the show, it was a different day and age, but you know, we were one of the first people with the digital format back then, but we fast forwarded and now we have connections through the internet, but I'll tell you what I am really struck by. I am struck by all of the various movies and television shows on multiple cable channels, on regular channels, on the Hulus and the, and the Amazons, I am stunned by how many of them are about this venue or some portion of it. What do you make of that? Well, I was in the creative, uh, in, I was in creative endeavors much of my life, my early life moving you know, through. I, I was trained, I was an English drama music major, and I've always worked with creative people. And one of the things I've discovered as a medium is creativity connects us with spirit immediately. Yeah. And so this is why on my online classes, I suggest ways for people to connect with their loved ones. So it isn't surprising that all of a sudden there is a burgeoning of home craft projects right now. It is one of the ways, or people are learning to play instruments that they never have before. Yeah. There is this alignment of creativity and spirit, um, which keeps us connected, gets us connected and keeps us connected. 
So I talk about that in this book and in my workshops. And, and so the creativity, spirit speaks through creative people. And much of mediumship um, comes in symbols and visions and, you know, and sort of that place where creatives live. So my sense is creative people were tapping into what was coming. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I was just going to ask you a follow up question because this is a question that I've heard a lot. And that is, how do I know when spirit is here? How do I know when spirit, what are the signs? What do I look for? And that is a question in your book. But I think that is one of the questions that I think I hear more often. And people really are still trying to figure out, is that a sign of that? What is it? Can you talk to that, please? Right. Well, the first thing I need to say to everybody is your loved ones are with you. When I do large events, there is no way that I can give a personal message to each person in the group. It's just not going to happen. It's not physically possible in the right. time and with the energy provided. But I suggest to people that they listen to everybody else's message because spirits will speak to the many through one. So that's the first thing is accept that your loved ones are with you. That's bottom line. That's where we start. Not, I'm going to test to see if you are with me. You know, let me, let me prove it to me that you are with me. Let's start with, thank you for being with me. Because in gratitude, that is where the manifestations can happen. And that's where the exciting stuff happens. So watch the synchronicity in your life. Um, I had a friend who was working in an office and his grandmother had just died and he was going through the files and a coworker came in and said, how you doing pumpkin? And then she like pulled back horrified. I can't believe I just called a colleague pumpkin. Well, it turns out that that was the pet name of my friend's grandmother. Oh yeah. And he, you know, and so spirits will enlist third parties you know to let you know that they are around there is a network oh. um you may smell smoke um there are electrical things that can occur the book is full of examples of how spirits may show up but it's very important that we not get fixated on this is how my father would show up for me because spirits are opportunists. They will use the opportunities and the circumstances and the energy that's available. And it doesn't work according to our dictates. So allow the spirits to show up as they will in your life. You know, this is fascinating because I used to have a different opinion about how spirits show up, right? I used to have an opinion about just what you said, like about six months ago, I referred to Jessica, which I would never do with one of my staff. I would never refer to her as hunt or honey. And out of my mouth, came, that, that was my stepmom. All of us were honeys, all of us. But I'm smart enough now, worked in HR for 10 years to know, you do not call a coworker hunt or honey, right? And Jessica, or pumpkin, or pumpkin. Or pumpkin. <laughs> and Jessica looked at me like, you know what I mean? But see, now in listening to you, you got to know that was my stepmom. You just have to know it. But here's something interesting, and I'd like your take on it. Sometimes, is it that spirit will go to any length to get our attention? Now, let me tell you why. Linda came to visit, comes to visit a lot. We're sitting in a living room. And her mom, Joan, there were two lamps I loved of her mother's. They were two dragon small dragon lamps. I love them. So when Joan, you know, moved on to the afterlife, she gifted those. Those were to me. And we are sitting in here, minding our business, no earthquake, nothing, no rumbling, no big. And all of a sudden we heard a crash. I mean, it was a crash. And we went and looked and we found it. And the lamp literally from the dresser somehow got off the dresser on the floor it didn't break mind you that is Did not key. break that is the key okay let me talk more about that so thank yes. you all right one of the ways we will know that when physical objects are moved by spirit and they will 
they will be moved, um, is that the items don't break. It's right. astonishing. I have seen objects fall like this, you know, almost defy gravity. You're like, how is that possible? I had a client uh, with whom I was speaking and I was talking, I think it was with her father, um, but her father talked about a photograph that was in their bathroom. And she said, and, and he explained that there was a, his energy was all around this photograph. And she said the photograph, when she came home one day, was laid out frame, glass, and photograph on the floor of the bathroom and nothing was broken, but it was taken apart. Um, so that kind of stuff is, is really like, gotcha. That's a gotcha from the spirits because you know that they are laughing at us, like scratching our heads going, what are the odds of that? They will get our attention. You do not have to worry about missing your, the presence of a loved one or a message from a loved one. You can't miss it. They are insistent. They are annoying like five-year-olds, you know, what about this? What about that? They, they will just get in your face. Do not worry. And this is, I mean, there is so much that you've included in here, including our animals, right? Yes. And, yes. and I'm so glad you did. Because sometimes in this life that we live in our physical being, we don't always connect with human beings but we do connect with our animals. Tell us a little bit on how animals in the afterlife may or may not be different than humans. Well, I used to think that there was a people heaven and an animal heaven, like an I animal. I did too. <laughs> you know, I really did. And I realized my fault was thinking in terms of ability to express consciousness as the differentiation. Um, what I've come to understand, and this happened when a bald grandfather in spirit showed up with a bald dog for somebody. And I said, I see a bald man, grandfather, and a bald dog. Well, it turns out the dog had a skin disease and all the hair fell out. And the woman I was giving this information to was laughing. She goes, yeah, I had a bald grandfather and, you know, we had a bald dog. And at that moment with the grandfather and the dog walking in together, being present there in spirit together, I thought, Oh, I have to rethink this whole thing. And now the more that we include animals as our family members, um, the more they show up as family members. So um, I, I will have dogs show up and call themselves a princess. And wouldn't you know that happens to be the name of the dog. Um, and a dog will, uh, one dog said to me, um, uh, cookie, cookies in a jar. And I thought, oh, this dog really likes little cookies in a jar. Well, it turns out the dog's name was Cookie and Cookie was in a jar. The ashes were in a jar, cookies in a jar. I mean, animals are so funny. I have spoken with a miniature donkey who loves poetry and thanked his owner for writing and reading a poem at his funeral. I've spoken with a, a um, not a chameleon, but a, a lizard um, that was in a frat house who loved the music and used to rock with the music and also get high with the brothers in the frat <laughs> house. You know, we don't want to mention that. Animals are so diverse um, and absolutely in relation to us. And an interesting thing about communicating with animals, um, as I'm speaking with people who call me or come for sessions or come to events, is that animals are with us a very short time. And we may think it's, it's really painful that they're here such a short time. But how they help with a medium is when I see an animal that was with someone at a certain period of time, I know that the spirits want to address whatever occurred at that place in time. So animals and pets can also be placeholders for the spaces in our lives. Because in the afterlife, there is no time. So when yeah. spirits speak to me, it's in the eternal present moment. It could get very confusing because everything exists at the same time. But animals and pets help to set a timeline um, in a person's life experience. Wow. I have to ask you this question because this is, I think, one of the most challenging questions 
that I think people experience. You know, I was kicked out of Catholic boarding school. When I was <laughs> well, you know, I went to Catholic high school. We, we can have conversations about that another but, time. <laughs> well, it, I'm six years old, but it's the reason I got kicked out of Catholic boarding school. And it, it really is as simple as this. I'm going to give you the short version. I'm sitting on a weekend. I didn't get picked up. My sister never came to get me. I stayed many weekends because my sister didn't come to get me. But this weekend in particular, she didn't come. And I'm in mass with all of the nuns, with everybody. And I'm sitting next to this the ninth station of the cross. And I, I love Jesus. It doesn't matter how I feel about religion, right? But there's something about my connection to this man. And I looked over and the ninth station is where he falls down for the last time. And he said to me something like, don't worry, my child, your mother is with me now, seriously. And so I pull on sister Michael Anthony and I'm like, Jesus just told me my mother, that's what I said. I'm like a little drags me by my ear to mother superior sitting down mother superior mother superior has her head down we walk in and sister michael anthony says blasphemy or something like that whatever the language is she's claiming she talked to jesus she said her mother was with jesus and sister michael and and, and mother superior brought her head up tears rushing down her face she had a note my mother had just died mm. now why was I kicked out of school? Well, here's the question. The controversy isn't whether or not I heard, I heard Jesus talk to me or not. The question was the conversation about the afterlife, religion, and spirits. And that question is in the book. You know, there is a question in the book about spirits and God. I want you to just talk with us about that because I think this is one of these questions that keeps coming up over and over again. Well, I really like the way you have framed all of this, which is to separate out personal relationship with a higher level entity and a religion that codifies what your behavior should be. It, those are two very different things. Um, I can only report what spirits have told me. Yes. Um, I too have seen Christ um, and in relationship to people who work in their work of healing with the Christ consciousness. I have seen Mother Mary with people who uh, work with that energy or have some devotion to Mother Mary. I have seen angels uh, and they're often in relationship to people who love and have communication with angels. Um, what I would say is that the afterlife and spirit and God are far bigger and more magnificent than we can understand, than our finite brains can process. Yeah. So that's why allowing a more openness and why even spirit communication has changed in 25 years. It's because as people begin to understand, the spirits can show us more. You know, I remember there was one lady who was dying and, and she, she said to me, I wanted to die and see the face of God. And she said it in a sort of a declarative way. And her daughter said those were her last words. I want to die and see the face of God. Well, being the curious person I am, of course I had to ask, um, well, did you see the face of God? And she said, I didn't see the face of God, but God is everywhere. And so I'm reminded of the last song I wrote. You see, I used to be a Christian musician. And I find it interesting that- No, the, I didn't know that. Well, the group was called Evidence Ministries. And now <laughs> I find it interesting that the work that I do provides evidential proof of life after death, but in an entirely different way. But the one of the last songs I wrote, the chorus is this, 
You are a God of the unexpected, the daily miracle kind. Forgive me for trying to contain you within the confines of my mind. You see, we make a very, very big mistake trying to limit God. And where this really came home to me was one day when I opened the door to my office and there was a woman standing there and she looked at me and she said, my son committed suicide. And I thought, oh, well, I usually don't like to know why people are coming to see me. You know, I like to let the spirits speak for themselves and not to be prompted. But I thought, well, uh, okay. She said, my priest told me that my son and I are separated forever. Yeah. That's right. I was told that about my mother and I. Okay. And I said to her, then why are you here? She said, well, I want to hear what you have to say. So this mother came to me for a second opinion because there was something she couldn't believe, which was that God loved her son any less than she did. And so I'm on that mother's side. And what I have discovered is that those who have passed with suicide are also with their families. They are with their loved ones. They're not shunted off into some other part of the afterlife, like a holding pen till the right. time they are to die. Them, you know, they would have died on this planet. And I think that that is a powerful message for what the day and age we live in, Hollister, because you and I both know, probably you more than I do, we know the degree by which people have decided living on this earth is too much for me. I mean, that clearly was, you know, my mom's pain that she felt. And, you know, the question always is for a lot of us, when people of the living are in that much pain, do they get relief in the afterlife or do they carry their pain with them? Well, there are two kinds of pain. The pain of those who experienced what they were going through before they passed and the pain of those left behind. Um, there's enough pain to go around. I don't speak about suicide from some lofty place. I speak of suicide from the heart because I lost my cousin Tommy when he was 19 years old. Very dramatically on Thanksgiving Eve, he killed himself in public. And even to this day, it brings tears to my eyes because yeah. he was so beautiful. And I was left yeah. with the questions, why didn't he come to me? Why, mm, didn't, wow. why wasn't I allowed to help him? And I realized right. that the cries of my heart are the cries of many. So what I would say for those of us who are survivors of, of suicide, those we love who have passed with suicide are able to face the pain that they have caused others while in kind of gosseted or um, comforted by love in the afterlife. The pain that they were experience, experiencing here dissipates just as physical pain dissipates. So people dying of cancer in great physical pain, when they pass, they are restored and that pain passes. Um, when people pass with Alzheimer's, their memory is restored. It, it never really left, just the ability to express it um, here on the earth plane because the brain was malfunctioning. Um, but people are fully restored. And what I find most encouraging and amazing is that when someone passes with suicide, it is an opportunity for us here to express unconditional love for that person in a way that isn't related to how they chose to not stay with us. So loving someone through a suicide is a very high level of unconditional spiritual love. Oh, and yeah. the spirits honor that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I so love that you just shared that. Because there is a quest for peace, peace of mind, peace of heart, understanding. You know, there's so many questions and so many, so many moments of blame that we have. We should have done more. We could have done more. And I want to thank you for the work that you do in the world and what you bring to people. 
and beyond belief, the level of relief you provide for people and an understanding that is very hard to articulate, Hollister, about this. And the thing I love most about your book is that you are talking to people that read it in a way that they just not only understand it, but can feel a sense of freedom from. And that is so brilliant about your work. I want to thank you for today. Uh, again, Hollis Durant, everyone, please give out your website. And one last question in the last minute we have. I'd love to know your personal message. Okay. Well, my name is Hollis Durant. I'm a very accessible medium. You can meet me at hollisterrand.com. I have a free email newsletter. The book is available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and also bookstores um, where available for curbside pickup. My message for everybody here is we are not living alone and we do not die alone. So if you are fearful or concerned about people you know who may have been sick, or you feel as though you have been separated from people in their last moments of life, whether due to COVID or not, please know that they are with you. There is not death. There is only life. Thank you. Hollister, thank you so much. And I hope you will come back. Um, boy, I could talk to you for hours. Uh, well, and I would love it anytime. And people can work with you through your website as well, right? Yes, they can get information about private sessions, online Perfect. events. Uh, we have large events mid-sized events, and we have uh, personal sessions as well. I love it. I love it. I love Hollister. I love Hollister. Hollister Rand, everyone. I want to thank Benny for pushing all the right buttons. Olivia, I want to thank you so much for the brilliant job you've done on the video. Uh, I, I don't know if you know it, Hollister, but the, throughout the video, she's been putting up your contact page and the Amazon page and the book. And, you know, I work with the most beautiful people. And to all of you out there, I want to thank you, Larissa. I want to thank you, uh, Rosanna, all the people that watched on Facebook, all the people that listened here. Just please know this, no matter how you feel today and in the days to come, please know that you're blessed. Please know that we love all of you. We'll see you in a minute. We'll be right back.